talk about crystallographic directions. So when we develop these crystal lattice systems, these cubic systems, FCC, BCC, uh, SC, simple cubic, um, we are going to have to specify specific crystallographic directions and planes. Um, so to refer to these um, specific planes or directions, we're going to have to develop our own kind of coordinate system. Uh, and in order to kind of index these directions or planes. But luckily, uh, such a system has already been developed uh, called Miller Indices. So hopefully you've worked with 3D coordinate systems previously. So it could be 1, 2, 3, it could be X, Y, Z. And here we have H, K, L. H, K, L, Miller Indices. Um, and actually, you'll kind of see that we're going to use for vectors this specific uh, kind of square bracket notation, U, V, W which are integers corresponding to the reduced projections, again, on these axes, we are going to use this notation for vectors for crystallographic directions. Um, so we need to kind of specify and create some notation for how we're going to specify notation in this Miller indices, in these HKL indices, in this UVW indices. So again, X, Y, Z, 1, 2, 3, HKL. <laughs> so hopefully you'll remember that. Um, so let's do a couple of examples uh, to kind of get things moving here. So I'm going to draw our coordinate system. So I'm going to do H, K, L, X, Y, Z, and I'm going to draw our cube. I should have drawn the cube first. I'm going to draw it like this. This goes out here. Oh, wow, I am really bad at drawing. Let me undo and do that. So let's just draw our cube here. So this is our unit cell, our cube. So let's start out simple and draw the 1, 1 direction. So in this class, we are going to utilize, uh, again, we're just defining a vector, right? So when we define a vector, we are going to use basically this notation. So our finish, finish coordinates, so finish coordinates minus the start coordinates. So there's going to be, so we're going to define this vector as our finish points minus our starting points. So for example, for one zero zero, let's say I draw, I'm going to, I'm going to use this vector here. So I draw this vector. How do I know what the direction of the vector is? Well, look at the coordinates. What are my coordinates for the ending point, my arrow? Well, it's at 1, and where is it? It's at 0, L, 0, K, right? 1, 0, 0. Minus, where did I start? The origin. So minus 0, 0, 0, start minus finish. That gives me this. I could also draw equivalently like this here, here, this direction. Let's look at the coordinate. Let's look at the finish. So I have 1, 0, 1. That's the coordinate right here. What about here? I'm at 0, 0, 1. Again, just kind of coordinate system notation, 1, 0, 0. That's another way you could draw that notation, that value. Uh, and you could see, actually, we could go some other directions. All right, so let's look at, how about 1, 1, 1? So let's go ahead and change my color here. Let's look at the 1, 1, 1 direction. Well, if I pick my coordinate here, I could do 1, one on H, one on K, one on L. So that's going to be that diagonal all the way across the cell. Uh, we've already done one, one, zero. Come on, Professor Stein, I'll update and change the <laughs> of those notes. Um, what about something a little bit more complicated? So let's look at do more complicated one. So let's go change my uh, color here. So let's do what is this little hat function? So what in the world is this? Well. This hat here denotes a minus. So in HKL Miller indice notation, whenever you see a hat, it corresponds to minus one. Uh, make sure to kind of write this. Don't you know? You'll see me uh, oftentimes. I might put a zero there, but or a minus sign on the side there. But we want to make sure to put that hat there uh, to note a minus. So how are we going to draw this in this same unit cell? Well, let's do our center notation, right? So let's say my finish is one zero uh, zero, and let's say my start is uh, 0, 0. Actually, that's too easy. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and backtrack on that one. So let me erase again. You can see me kind of doing some of this a little bit live uh, <laughs> in this notation here. So let's figure out how to do, uh, for example, here. So let's do 1, 0, 0. So stay here. And let's do, uh, actually, yeah, let's do this. 0, 1, 0. So that will give us one, one hat, zero. So I was on the right track. I just confused myself for a second. So let's figure out, again, we do 
our arrow, our finish minus our start. So our finish is at right here. So our arrow is like this. And then our start is going to be at 0, uh, 1, 0. So this is our right here. From here to here, this would be our 1, uh, one, 1 hat, 0 direction. That's it. So let's about the uh, two, two, two direction. Well, that's a direction that's just simply parallel to our one, one, one direction. So these are parallel. So this direction, this direction, they are parallel directions. So we, you can you know, draw that kind of uh, simply again, uh, if we can't really draw that in our single uh, unit cell. Now, uh, let's go ahead and do a couple more examples before we get to this very, very uh, critical topic of uh, basically crystallographically equivalent directions. Um, so let's go ahead. We have another. Um, uh, that's what that's kind of the fun part of going through these notes. Um, we have another little example that we can do. That's a nice little topic. So let's do an inverse problem. That's very common in this class. Um, so let's go to determine this vector. We already know what it is, but let's prove it. So what's my finish? It's going to be half, half, uh, and then one minus my origin zero zero zero. In your HKL indices we don't want to lead any fractions like you're not going to kind of see these values here so we need to basically multiply by uh to get this to integer values so please call it multiple to get these to integers uh i'm going to multiply this by two and that's going to give me my one two direction so don't leave fractions in here no 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 make it an integer and there we go you're direction experts let's look at another example here so what's our finish so this point is going to be at our Zero in the x, zero one half, or uh, excuse me, zero one one half, one one half minus one zero zero. That's it. So let's go ahead and figure this out. So we have our one hat, uh, we have our one, and then we have our one half, and we need to multiply this out. So again, multiply by two. So that's going to lead us to Two hat, two hat, one. There we go. And that's our directions. So you are going to be a uh, directions expert. So before we move on, um, just a little quick kind of side note uh, in this discussion. Uh, we are uh, dealing with cubic materials typically. So we're going to be dealing with simple cubic cells. It'll look like this uh, here, here, here. Um, but often, sometimes, you'll be dealing with hexagonal material. So let's go back and actually look at, um, there's actually very, very important hexagonal structures and hexagonal close pack structures. These materials can be, uh, titanium is one, you know, uh, very famous examples of a hexagonal close pack material it can exist in BCC structure or HCP structure. But anyways, when you're dealing with hexagonal materials, you're going to have to do a change in coordinate system. So instead of the UVW directions that we've been dealing with, um, a three axis, you're gonna have to use a four axis for, uh, and a whole different basis step, four axis basis um, for hexagonal close pack materials. So, uh, but there are, there is a conversion. So titanium, zirconium, uh, those are kind of the really, really important ones. Um, so there's kind of this conversion system. So you can see here, um, you have U, V, T, and W instead of just UVW. So there's this kind of conversion in here. We're not going to get too much of that into this course, so instead focus on your uh, cubic directions. Now, back to this topic that I kind of said that we're going to kind of come back to, uh, and I'm actually come, come back to it this time. Let's go back to this topic of uh, crystallographically equivalent directions. So this is a very, very important topic. The idea, when I say something that's crystallographically equivalent, what I mean by that is that um, basically the spacing, the number of magnet, uh, the atoms, and the magnitude of our vector, so our vector magnitude is the same. So you could imagine if I blindfolded you and spun you around, <laughs> um, and then I drew this cube in the same direction, you would be able to kind of tell, okay, yeah, this is a, um, these are, you couldn't distinguish it. They're crystallographically equivalent. So if I rotated and moved the cube around, they're the same. So let's, let's actually look at a couple of examples. Um, and the way that we denote things that are crystallographically equivalent um, is this, you know, these brackets. So whenever you see these brackets like this, so this bracket, bracket, that means they're crystallographically equivalent. So let me actually go ahead and draw, I'm going to erase over here. And I'm going to draw like this, draw here. 
like this. Sorry, <laughs> I'm trying to go smoothly but uh, correctly. So let's go ahead and draw my cube again. So I've got my cube. And let's say this time, again, we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves, but I have atoms at these corners. This is a simple cubic cell. So our same coordinate system, H, A, L. So let's draw and show that these are crystallographically equivalent. So this direction, this is our blue. So this is my one zero zero direction. I could also prove, or actually, let's look at green, which is going to be my zero zero one direction. So zero zero one. So do these two directions have the same magnitude? Yes, they have the same length. In this crystal structure, are they passing through the same number of atoms? They draw an atom here. So they're passing through two atoms. Yes, uh, and they're passing through. You know, again, they have the same magnitude. So they're passing through the same number of atoms, and they have the same magnitude. And again, you can imagine, right, if I rotated this crystal, um, if I had my green, if I rotated the crystal like this and flipped it, you couldn't, again, you couldn't distinguish between those two. Now, is this direction, oh, excuse me, not blue, I do, let me get here, is this direction, what is this direction? So let's go ahead and write that out. We won't even have to do the math this time. Uh, so this is one, one. Uh, zero direction. Is this crystallographically equivalent? No. Why? Because the magnitude is not the same, right? It passes through the same number of atoms, but the distance that between these atoms is not the same. This is, if this is A and this is A, you're going to see that in a second, this is root 2A, uh, etc. So the magnitudes are not the same. So we can classify for 1, 0, 0 all of these different kind of crystallographically uh, equivalent directions. So we call this the 1, 1, and 0, 0. Again, all of these are the same. Uh, so it could be, where's purple? And then let's go, we could go here as well. You know, anywhere, any way we want it, you know. <laughs> uh, it could be, you know, here. It could be here. It could be here. You know, you're starting to get the picture. So there's these 1, 0, 0 crystallographically equivalent directions. We also have, you could have 1, 1, 1. So that would include... One, one, and then one, 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 et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we could also have these one, one, zero directions. So those families as well. Oops, not activate windows. Uh, so there's different families of directions, and then there, there's some of these families of directions that are going to be very important because they're going to be called um, close packed directions. Uh, and that's when uh, close packed directions, so close packed directions. That's when that uh, a direction in a unit cell is only going to pass through, you know, these atoms are actually bigger, you know, we're going to see that in, in, a, in an upcoming lecture, are bigger than they appear. So a close back direction is when a vector is only passing through atoms, but that's more, uh, a little bit more of that later on. So uh, we are going to get into next time uh, this idea of crystallographic planes, uh, and we'll kind of look at uh, kind of these, some of these other examples, planes, directions, actually we've gone through directions, but we'll also look at kind of how do we draw planes in our unit cell. So more on that next time, next video. See you then. See ya.